Oh, this is not going to be a cheery video, folks. Uh, about ready to throw in the towel on this whole raising animals thing. Uh, this is really heartbreaking, and uh, I don't know why. A goat would try to mortally injure another baby goat that's in their own herd. But, uh, this is this is horrible, and I never want to go through this again. More unprecedented loss on the farm today. Uh, we heard the farm vet coming out to give Cole his rabies shot and check up on some yellow eye discharge and a wheezing noise he'd started making a few days ago and found him. I gotta tell you guys, this uh, raising your own animal stuff is unbelievably emotionally, mentally, and physically draining and... Uh, Losing two goats in two days after losing two pigs in three days in the fall is really a little much. I'm actually pondering whether I'm even cut out for this. Um, really, really liked little Cole, and uh, he was the backbone of my first-gen kinder breeding project, so that's kind of all completely gone to hell now. I don't have an Idaho pasture pig right now to breed those either, and getting a little boar fell through a couple months ago. Um, don't know what I'm doing with my pig and goat plans right now anymore. Like, at all. It's just a little much uh, to have this much bad luck in one year. I've, I've had bad luck with the birds, but this is different. This is... Uh, I mean, losing a goat or a pig is uh, comparable to having your whole flock wiped out by a weasel or Merrick's disease or something. It's just... I don't know, man. Might be uh, rethinking having all the animals on the farm. It's just... Yikes. I don't think people realize what goes into... Uh, Having your own animals and your own meat supply, it's just, I mean, you care about these animals, they're, they're not just, you know, they're not property, they're not things you own, and they're not just items that are here for you to take from, they're living beings and creatures with their own lives and personalities and everything, and it's really, really, really hard when one dies and you don't know why. Well, we're going to get an autopsy done of poor little Cole and little Blizzard who passed away yesterday and try to find out what on earth happened so we can either prevent this from happening again or just call it unbelievably bad luck and a sign from the universe that maybe I should be doing something else. Oh, poor Cole. Oh my gosh, he's such a funny little guy. Yeah, he had a great winter coat on him. I thought yeah. he was going to do fine and that he'd be mating with the ladies this month or next month. Backbone of my kinder goat program. Oh boy. Took me years to find the little oh guy. Oh gosh. It's always like your best one that it's always the crazy something. annoying stuff happens to. Yep. Best roosters, best eggs, yeah. best goats, best pigs. I'm hoping he at least looks well fed. He does so far. For sure. Feel bad eating the little guy. He's definitely a little frozen, but not bad, so I don't think he's been gone for very long. Maybe like six hours would be my best estimate. He was eating and drinking and just had that wheezing sound. Yeah, and definitely. The yellow eye discharge and the...
crusty nose that I had to keep wiping every day. Yeah, I'm definitely interested to see what his lungs look like. For sure, I wonder if he had some kind of awful problem there. But usually they show you a little bit more systemically first though, before they, uh, before they go. Not, unless it was like a, a sudden bleed or something like that. Yeah, he just started wheezing a couple of days ago, so yeah. it's no good. But he just died. I, I had no idea that, that you were going to show up and my goat would be dead. <laughs> I certainly had no idea either. And losing this one yesterday was also a shock. Yeah. Do you, um, do you guys ever have any, like, parasite issues? I know it's not really the time of year for that, but sometimes we do see stuff linger over from like the summer and fall uh, the winter. One of my pigs brought in mange and I've been moving okay. them around and treating them for that for a couple of years now trying to get that completely gone. Any like GI bugs or? Not that I'm aware of but this is the first autopsy I've had done on a, on a goat and okay. the pigs weren't done and I probably should have asked him to do the pig. I mean the pigs were within three days of each other one after the other both wow. sows. So I want to guilt. Oh gosh. Yeah, this is it's getting really, really frustrating and discouraging yeah. and expensive. <laughs> like these are That's like registered the animals. Of farming. <laughs> registered animals that I travel far and wide to find. Where did he come from? Well, this little guy actually came from Vermont, but uh, the other closest place I found was in Maine, and they wouldn't sell me one with horns, so that was yeah. frustrating. <laughs> yeah. I have to put a you know, reservation on them to have their horns kept. So I gotta yeah. find them right at a certain age. Really <laughs> yeah. Most of the time that dehorning is done in like the first week or two. Yeah, it's really tricky finding uh, animals that still have their equipment. Yeah. Wow, there's a lot in there on that little guy, tiny guy. Yeah, he definitely was still eating. Um, yeah. Uh -huh. So I don't know why he'd suddenly die on me. <laughs> Poor little thing. It's very, very cute and very sweet. Yeah. Have you had young ones in that facility before where you are? That you're, um, uh, what yeah. you have there? Uh, and they've the, done okay in the winter? The big white one over there, Yeti, his, okay. his kid is with him and his other kid went off to a new home and he was a kind. Mm -hmm. We did have another little boy in with him that was his son that uh, died mysteriously. I, okay. just, I don't know what happened to him. Yeah. It was this one's sister here, so that's frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> it was long. Nice liver. Big stomach. Oh, blood. That's supposed to be there, right? Actually, that's fine to be there because yeah. I just cut through uh, yeah, something yeah. that was supposed to have blood in it. So they can still have plenty of blood after death. I should have a set of those for my butchering tools. Yeah. Okay, buddy. So nothing looks really scary with his lungs yet. I'm gonna take those out and have a closer look.
Okay, so here are his lungs. They're nice and soft and squishy and pink. Don't see any abscesses or big pockets of air that shouldn't be there. Oh. Here's his heart. So nothing's like consolidated or anything like that. Everything seems to be like the right size and the right color. Oh, I better get my knife sharpened here. Boy, the dogs don't appreciate being left out. I don't know. They, they want to be over here sticking their face in all of us sure right now. Will. Okay. It's like too much, too much knife here for this little guy. Yeah. <laughs> Looking for parasites or? Nope, I'm just making sure that nothing is enlarged. All the parts and pieces are there. Sometimes these little guys will be born with holes in their hearts. Oh, like a genetic heart defect. Yeah, and sometimes they can have, like, infections settle into the heart. But heart and lungs look good. So the upper respiratory thing did not cause his death. And here's his liver. His liver looks good. Tissue inside it looks good. It's his little gallbladder. Here we have one of his kidneys. It's where everything's slippier, slipperier the colder it gets. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if they're septic, you can find signs of that in the wall of the kidney. This little kidney looks okay. Alright, so now we're going to have a closer look at his GI tract. So, see this if we is have just really weird. There. Is this guy again? Not even a year. Okay. Maybe six, seven, eight months. Okay. So this is the first chamber of his stomach called the reticulum. It has that honeycomb structure. Sometimes they can eat things they're not supposed to and that gets stuck in there. And can cause an infection. You wouldn't believe what I found in hay and had to take out of it so they yeah. wouldn't accidentally eat it. So this is his abomasum right here, which is like his true stomach. Here is where I'm looking really hard for things like parasites and ulcers. So he has some hemorrhages. Oh jeez. And... Oh shit, that'd be horrible. I wonder... Just hemorrhages? A, it's pretty mild, like, changes in the color. It, there's not any, like, major blood, but I'm just talking about, like, kind of little pinpoint parts of red. Looking really close to make sure there's not, like 
little worms there. Sometimes those worms hang out in these folds over winter and cause an anemia. Yeah, I've been checking their eyelids and warming them because okay. I he was nice and lost, pink. Lost a goat over a year ago to worms. I couldn't believe it. Okay, it's just. <laughs> when was the last time you noticed his eye color? Was it always or? The last time you checked it, was it nice and pink all the time? Yeah, it's been okay. pretty pink. Good, good, good. This girl, too. Good, okay. So, not much there, which is good. You know, I don't see any parasites. Now I'm just going to open up. I do use a natural wormer, so it'd be good to know if it really works. <laughs> <laughs> which one is that? Um, Molly's Herbals, the okay. wormwood formula. Okay. The heavy stuff, I uh, read they can build up resistance to it really fast. And... They can if you don't use it the right way. If you use it the right way, you can make it work out just fine. Well, also, I, I don't think I can have an organic farm and use the chemical stuff. Oh, no. <laughs> no, you can't. Stuff I wouldn't want to give organic. my own animals. So. <laughs> so the papilla and his rumen were developing nicely. So that all looks good. Mystery deepens. He's giving us a lot to go off of so far. He didn't have any abnormal fluid within his abdomen, which is good. But this stuff here looks a little angry. So let's maybe have a closer look. Mm -hmm. So these are his small intestines. And then eventually if you follow these all the way around, we get to his cecum. Um, here at the end of his small intestinal tract and then his colon, which is this little spiral here. So we're going to open up some pieces there. The reason I say, you know, it looks a little, a little angry, you know, some of this discoloration we expect post-mortem to be normal. Yeah. Um, but you see these bumps here, like not these, that's poop, but these bumps right here, yeah. those are lymph nodes and those are kind of swollen mm -hmm. all around in his small intestine. So that's different and not expected. He never had any diarrhea or anything like that recently, uh, right? I mean, everything looks really solid in here, but... The goat poops have looked like goat poops. Okay. Yeah, I mean, a little gassy, but I don't see anything that's like blocked up. All right, let's open up a couple of these little guys and just make sure everything in there looks normal. And this stuff is kind of, the small intestines degenerate the most quickly. So this stuff is pretty well like <sighs> broken down already, but I mean, it's pink in there. Doesn't look particularly scary. Maybe I'll check out one of these redder pieces. I mean, like, that just looks like normal. Well, that's a little bit inflamed, maybe. You know, you have to consider what normal post death looks like, and yeah. there is going to be some change like that but some of this stuff looks more red and angry than it should be which makes sense if he does have swollen lymph nodes within his small intestines right, have a look at your cecum buddy A gooey little cecum. Nothing exciting there. The colon looks normal. It was doing like it what it was supposed to do. He definitely was eating right up until the end. I know, so yikes, what happened? <laughs> Poor little guy. Yeah. I was expecting him to be very alive and get his rabies vaccine today. Yeah. So here's his spleen. Spleen is not enlarged at all. It's very small. That looks normal. There's his other kidney. Alright, odds, I'm gonna cut myself here with a 
Okay, and his bladder is full, but it doesn't seem like he was still able to pee. That's something we always check in boys, even if they're not castrated. So, so here's what I'm finding. Um, I'm a little bit thrown off because, you know, you were saying that he was vaccinated for CDT. Um, Allegedly. Yeah, so... But not herd tested. Yeah, so there's no way to confirm a diagnosis of a clostridial death, unfortunately, because to test for it, it's a bacteria that's found in the intestines, but as soon as death happens, that bacteria just grows out of control, regardless of whether or not that's So you can't tell them. us that was it at all. So I can't tell if that was it. Um, I also still can't rule out, like, if he had any kind of trauma... The, the blood that he kind of had, like, around here, I didn't find any external wounds. When I was feeling around earlier, um, everything... No broken neck. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it feels normal. <laughs> um, so... I think we have a couple possibilities. I mean, it's still possible that there was some trauma that caused a sudden death. I can't rule out a clostridial sudden death, but it's less likely with him being vaccinated. I wonder a little bit because of the lymph nodes and some of the really subtle and mild um, inflammatory changes in his intestines. So we're kind of... <laughs> Contact his breeder and ask to have the herd tested that he came from. <laughs> well, you can't um, test the herd for a clostridium. You can test for contagious... Oh, CT and D. Yeah, CDT is what I'm talking about for a clostridium. You can test for things like CL and CAE and UNIs. Uh, those don't cause this type of death or presentation. Those are more like chronic diseases. Um, for CDT, you can't uh, know for sure. So um, I also can't take, you know, something like maybe hypothermia off the table um, because he was, you know, maybe a little under the weather with the upper respiratory, but he was in good body condition and he was eating, so I have a really hard time making an argument for that, you know. Um, and he's not dehydrated or anything like no, that? No, no, he's, he's definitely retained plenty of fluid, so we don't have a for sure answer, um, and that does happen sometimes with autopsies, but I think what I would take from this is a couple things. I would, um... Now, yeah, how do I sure. prevent this from happening again if I don't know what it is? <laughs> yeah, so I would just, um, we can go over vaccine protocols for CDT if you want. Um, oh, they, they get a yearly... Yearly shot? Yeah, but I, I just okay. got them and yeah. Yeah, for some reason he hadn't had his rabies, but he had the... Yeah, so the sometimes one. we can still see this happen if they've only had one dose instead of the initial two-dose series, oh. that type of thing. So it would be good to verify, you know, if you do get something Two from dose. a breeder, if they need that second dose still, or if they've had it already. A lot of times the breeders give the first two doses, but it, it really just depends on who you're working with. Um, and even in vaccinated animals, this can still happen occasionally. Goats are so susceptible to clostridial disease. Um, so you know, most of the time it's something we see in the spring. Um, but we can see it any time of year. <laughs> Do I need to worry about my other goats who are vaccinated? Um, I hope. <laughs> if they're if they're vaccinated, then the risk is much less. And if they were, you know, appropriately vaccinated and on time, you know, chances are very, very, very low that this would be an issue for them. Should my kids have another shot first? <laughs> your, your goat kids? Yeah. Uh, tell me about their vaccination history. I uh, don't know if they've had two of the uh, CT and D shots. Okay. Um, how old are they now? Uh, they were born in May, I think. Okay. So typically the first shot um, we recommend giving between a month and, and two months of age. Um, and then the second shot is repeated a month later. Um, and then after that, they go to once a year. So... Um, uh... 
-hmm. yeah these are my first kids so okay <laughs> yeah so if they haven't had the second shot what we would typically recommend is restarting them on the vaccine booster series um okay so that Whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah. So um, that would mean they would get a first shot again, like it's kind of a blank slate. Um, because at this point, the immunity from that first shot has probably dipped pretty low. Yeah. Because um, the idea of the two shots is you give the first shot to an unvaccinated animal, and that immunity climbs up and gets a small peak. Um, and then by coming in a month later, as that first shot immunity starts to fall a little bit, you give the second shot, and then they get a much second or a much higher second peak of immunity that lasts much, much longer, a year. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the idea of that initial series, getting them up to snuff so they can make it that year. Um, the first shot probably only gets you about, we booster at about four to six weeks because we know that's when the peak starts to go down. So usually you're only going to get like three months. So I should schedule the second shot when you're here doing the first shot. So we yep. don't forget to. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. You got it. <laughs> you got it. I was switching farm vets. So it was a, it was a mess. Oh, I understand. <laughs> Mine retired. <laughs> yeah. Did you use um, Dr. Spooner or Dr. Stewie? Uh, Dr. Stewie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we can have a look at this girl now if yeah, you'd like. Yeah, her head just... is, uh, I don't know if that's the reason either, but it, like I was, said it could be. Um, I was uh, unbelievably guilt tripped over that no. horn. This horn would not have killed her. <laughs> I wanted to set it and tape it and no. separate her so she didn't get more injured. If she had a hematoma or something underneath her brain, that might have killed her. And that's not something you could have seen or done anything about. Aye, aye. You know, she was just bullied because she was the yeah. baby of the, the lower bottom rung Nubian goat. Yeah, so. and unfortunately I don't really have the capability to open a skull out here in the field yeah, <laughs> to check for that type of thing or skull fractures. Need my and circular saw. So. Essentially, yeah, we have a saw <laughs> back at the office that when we need to do that, we can. <laughs> um, but nothing, has anything changed like in their routine, like what they're eating or... Um, I usually like supplement with chaff hay in the winter and haven't okay. been able to afford that this winter. So okay. they've just been getting hay, alfalfa pellets, okay. and a teeny bit of grain when they're good or I need them to do something like okay. stand still. Yeah. <laughs> and they all need their hooves trimmed horribly right now. Yeah. So um, I've been waiting for a warm day to do that. Gosh, this, I don't blame you. <laughs> just not great weather to yeah. do it when it's negative 18 out or something. No, I agree. They don't want to come out of their house, you know? Yeah. I think we're by some miracle getting a 40 degree day next week. That'll be nice. I'll have to decide what I'm getting done on that day then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get it while the getting's good. <laughs> so how long has she been dead for? Uh, yesterday? Whole, yeah, yesterday okay. morning we found her. It was awful. Oh my god. We didn't hear her and then it was like, uh oh. Oh no. She's yeah, was usually really loud and the first one calling for breakfast. That's right. You guys were saying she was pretty vocal. Yeah, the Nubians seem way more vocal than the Kinders. Yeah. She's a Kinder Nubian mix. So. Okay. I feel like I don't see too many Kinders. Not in this state, no. I seem to be the only breeder in the state I know of so far. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely the first person I've met with uh, Kinders. You know, I, th I thought, you know, there'd be a big demand up here, but it's going slow on that front. Yeah. <laughs> People don't seem to know what they are. Be a good time for you to everyone, tell them. Yeah, everyone has Nigerian dwarf goats. Oh my stuff. gosh, that's by far. <laughs> drives <most>. me crazy. <laughs> You're not the only one. No. I, don't want, I don't want what everyone else has. <laughs> yeah. Now these look like a great dual purpose homesteading goat. Mm -hmm. so. Wanted to make first generations, and that's what coal was for. Yeah. He never even got to. Frozen. Sorry, getting my hands back. Oh, yeah, frozen goat. <laughs> yeah, she's definitely a little bit colder. Okay. Gosh, she is full of poop. Oh, no, backed up. Holy moly, girlfriend. Wow. That's oh, that wouldn't make me feel good at all. A lot. What happened Ooh. to her? Holy crap. How old is she? 
seven, eight months. But little for her size, because the others bully her off her food. I have to stand there for ten minutes so she can eat her hay and her grain. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. yeah, that is backed up, to say yeah. the least. Like, really backed up. Was she, like, not feeling well for a couple days? She was very before vocal. Before she died? Yeah, very vocal, and but still eating, but not as voraciously as the okay. others. She definitely wasn't pooping as much as she should have been. Oh, my God. But I don't see anything that's like actually structured up. All right, let's put these little guys out of the way here first. Water warm by chance? That's okay uh, if it's not. It'll be, it'll be warmer. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I was just gonna say if it was, I might dip my hands in there real quick. We do have warm water, but it won't stay warm out here. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> if I... you need some hot water, I can... yeah. No, that's okay. I'm all right right now. We should be done soon. Any idea why she would be that backed up? Um, so, potentially if she had some kind of neurological problem, a blockage, um, we're going to open everything up in there and see what's going on, get a better idea, and then maybe we'll have some better ideas. Oh, it doesn't seem like life is very easy for a lot of farm animals, even if I do my best to take care of them. <laughs> yeah. It's not easy. <laughs> no. I've come a long way. I had trouble dissecting a, a pig in vet deck school. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I should say, if you're here standing watching this, you've definitely come quite far. I've come very far. Yeah. <laughs> Most owners can't watch me do this to their goats. So it's, you know, it's traumatic. It's hard to see your the animals that you care for every day like this. It is, especially when these weren't on the meat list at all. Yeah, <laughs> we're right. supposed to stay alive. You know. we're loved. There, that's a common place for blockages. Parasites? No parasites? I don't see any. Usually, um, the worms that sit in the abomasum are pretty easy to find if they're there, you know, in any kind of huge quantity. She might have like one or two that were overwintering, but. Certainly not enough. Yeah. These lithium batteries do not like cold weather. No, they don't. <laughs> Too. Yeah. Nothing weird in there. Trying not to make a huge mess here. Some of my viewers will be able to smell that from here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. That goat burp smell. And there's that little spleen right there on your side. Not enlarged or anything. There's nothing they could have gotten into that um, could be like toxic or anything, right? I'd want to know if there were. Yeah. Um, they're getting the same water that we drink, and uh, okay. I mean, the hay source is different this year. Okay. But using local organic 
alfalfa pellets and grain. Yep. And the boys don't get grain. Okay. It's, the girls get very little of it right now because they're not milk. <laughs> okay, good. No reason to bribe them. Nope. Jeez. Um. There's a lot of poo. Yeah. A lot of poop, but... Nothing actually, like, blocking anything up. Following everything all around. Um, potentially if she was dehydrated, too, that can kind of dry him out and they can get a little bit impacted. Any signs of that? Or how could I tell? I couldn't tell you at this point. We were we were smashing water for days when it was really, really, really cold uh, and making sure they had lots of it. I'm surprised we haven't lost any birds during this. <laughs> yeah, this is spell. not good weather for bird keeping. Not at all. It's great weather for weasel attacks though. Oh, <laughs> God, I believe it. My ducks got hit a few months ago and a Drake succumbed to his injuries last month. Yeah. They walk around with their neck sort of shrunk in. Yeah. And don't recover from it. There's her tiny little uterus. Okay. Well, that's all. There is no blockage in here. It's all moving. As it should. Lots of it. Yeah. So she didn't have she has some lymph nodes that are a little swollen, but You um, think they could have eaten something like toxic? Yeah. It would be very, very unlikely, but I'm kind of just trying to consider everything. Yeah, I don't even take hay bales that have the plastic baling twine because I've seen little yeah. threads of the plastic get into the hay and freaked yeah. out. <laughs> like, I don't want my goats eating plastic. Yeah. So, again, she has some lymph nodes in her intestines that are a little swollen. Same well, with the other guy. Yeah, what was and her they're, they're across history? The, uh, same, she said, the one okay. CT and D shot and a rabies shot. Yeah. So, you think they both could have died of a preventable disease because yeah. <laughs> they screwed up their vaccine well, schedule? You know, or... <laughs> it's like I said, it's an impossible diagnosis to make unless, like, we were there as soon as they died, and then we were able to grab like intestinal contents, and even then, the diagnosis is really hard to make. So it's something that's always kind of there in the back of your mind whenever you have a, a goat die suddenly. Um, Within days of each other? Yeah. One so, right after the other? Yeah, so it's definitely weird. Um, I can't rule it out. Um, I still can't rule out the trauma thing either. Um, I think, you know, taking everything together, let's um, get your babies fully and appropriately vaccinated so that way we can totally take that off, or at least 99% take that off the table as a concern. For, um, you know, the ones that you have that are, like, maybe, like, mostly vaccinated. Um, and then, so far as, you know, could these have been trauma-related injuries? Like I said, I can't, I can't really tell that unless I, like, had the ability to crack their brain open and put them through an MRI. Yeah. <laughs> um, is what it, we is it that to... common for... I mean, how, how long do people usually separate goat kids from the rest of the herd to prevent deadly trauma because yeah. I thought these kids were old enough to go back in yeah. with the adults. So um, usually most systems I see what they do is um, they'll pull the does when they're about ready to kid um, into like a kidding pen that's nearby or adjacent to like the pen with all the other adults um, and a lot of times you know that's an area where mom still has her privacy but um, the herd can still see what's going on and vice versa. And I usually recommend they stay in that kidding pen with one another for about a week or so to promote bonding, make sure the kids are going really well, 
then after that, I usually kick them back out with the herd. I mean, yeah, they're really that's what young. I thought. So yeah, so um, like this level of this level bullying of, would be crazy if that's what causes that. I agree, and I think it'd be very unusual to have like two deathly traumas back to back as yeah, well. Yeah, a day uh, days in a row. Yeah. So something you know is definitely really strange here. Yeah. Um, like I said, I can't rule out trauma, I can't rule out clostridium, but the autopsies haven't given me much more to go off of at this time. So that's what I was kind of asking about, you know, were there any changes to anything at all with like feeding or environment or bedding? Sometimes it's wonky stuff yeah. um, and it's the same water that you guys drink. So yeah, spring water. <laughs> yeah, so um, the other, only other thing to consider... Thank you for that. I'm sorry. I'm just blabbing away just because I like get my fingers in there for a second. Um, the only other thing to consider is um, trace minerals. Um, yeah, I've been, um, the boys don't have that. a thing for them yet, but the girls have been getting a, uh, a little bucket of uh, okay. free choice minerals, and she was actively partaking in that. Okay, that's good. Um, Thanks, if you could just set that there. What um, free choice mineral are you using? Uh, I think the Mana Pro, and yep. then there's also a feed dressing that okay. I've uh, sporadically been remembering to, to add to that. Okay, so usually like a trace mineral issue doesn't cause a sudden death. Usually what we see is like a selenium issue, and that causes them to not grow very well um, and it's kind of like a gradual decline before they actually die. Do they look tiny for their age or because she's no. about she's about the same actually bigger than the than the kinder kid who was born a day or two after. <laughs> yeah I mean I think yeah. they're probably pretty on track. Um, I mean body condition wise they they're well muscled she didn't have a lot of fat. He has yeah. some fat to yeah. work with. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't have said they were skinny, you know, just looking at them. Um, they were probably, you know, on a scale of five, which is how we body condition score. Um, goats, you know, he's probably like a two and a half out of five. And we look for between two and a half to three and a half as normal. So he's leaner, but he's not like, He's not too skinny, is what I'm saying. In my last farm vet, I asked if my goats were too skinny, and he told me everybody else's were too fat. <laughs> no, that's true. I, all the goats are always too fat. So I, so I freak out if my, you know, I'm feeling them all winter. Are you guys okay? Yeah. Do you feel like over their top line by, like their loins? They're, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Make sure good. it's not too bony. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, what happened to my, my girl with worms. Like within three or four days, she went from normal to looking it. anorexic. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. No, it was horrifying. It's noticeable when that happens. So, um, yeah. So I think this is somewhat of a mystery still. But I think the big takeaways are let's get those other kids properly vaccinated. Yeah, let's do that. Um, Definitely. And, um, so far as introductions go, like in social dynamics in the herd to try to prevent that, at least for the boys, whenever you're introducing a new boy to like the bachelor pad, um, I usually, again, it's what's practical and possible for you, but I like to have a small pen adjacent or nearby, you know, so everyone can kind of size each other up for a little while. And then, you know, I'll put them in with those guys, you know, after they've been seeing each other for about a week or so put them in for, you know, half hour, watch them, see how it goes. And, you know, they got to sort out their pecking order. There is going to be some of that behavior, but it shouldn't be like chronic abuse <laughs> either. Um, and if it is, then you might have like an individual that's kind of like prone to that behavior yeah. or it could be, you know, um, a bunch of other things like that particular goat may need like more square foot of space in order to feel comfortable with his social dynamics and you know there's all kinds of things that go go into that and goats are you know there's rules and then goats are also individuals too so a lot of it's kind of try to do the best you can and play it by ear <laughs> when it goes to in, in introducing the boys like that yeah i had to rehome my first two nubian goats because they were such bullies that they yeah. wouldn't let my current kinder goats into the house and oh they wouldn't gosh. let them eat. <laughs> it was yeah. just awful. Yeah. They were just the worst. 
if I had to, I had to send them to a new farm. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes that is the case. Um, but, uh, yeah. so, it, um, anyways, um, do Yikes. we want to pick, you know, a warmer day to come and work on those kids? Or did you want to get that done today? Or what, what were your thoughts for the vaccines? Um, if, if you are cool with doing it right now, I am. <laughs> okay. time it is. Uh, I don't know if you've got another appointment to run to. Or... I do. Let me see what time it is. I'll, I can't remember. 